this is Loopline, and in this video I want to cover Scrapebox for Mac. It's kind of like an introduction to Scrapebox for Mac. I'm not going to go over like every function of Scrapebox because I have like 140 other videos already at this point uh, of Scrapebox for Windows, and they have done uh, a great deal to make it more or less the same, and by more or less I mean 99.9% .9 the same functioning as Windows, so obviously it's some really basic differences like the menu items like up here and stuff, the X's are on the opposite side, but anybody knows this, the actual function of Scrapebox is going to be the same in uh, Windows and Mac for the 99.9% the .9 of everything. So if you're looking at a, a Mac guide down the track or looking at a Windows guide, it's basically going to be the same. Now that said, there is the, the tiny little bit of differences uh, in the way that it works. So um, if you're familiar with standard scrape box, you know, all of this you're going to notice is the same. Your results box might jump out at you. The results box for harvesting, like when you punch in a keyword over here, say we put in car, and then we want to start harvesting from uh, one of the search engines such as you know Google or Yahoo being whatever. Um, the results box in Windows is down here, results box in Mac is up here, so it just moved. It functions exactly the same way. The um, add-ons menu and the plugins menu up here work a little bit different than they do in Windows. So in Windows you go to show available plugins which would be this install uninstall right here and then you get to see a list and you get to click on the one that you want and install them. In Mac uh, it, they're sort of more integrated so you still choose the ones you want to install so I can go through here and you know uncheck all the ones that I don't want or check the ones that I want but it, it's basically that. I don't have to click on an add-on and then click install like I do in Windows. I just click the ones that I want and away you go. To that same nature though, in Windows when I want to update an add-on, like say because a new add-on update comes out, uh, something broke and they fixed it or they added new features or whatever, I have to go up here to show available add-ons in Windows and then choose that add-on and click update. And it's the updating happens in the add-ons menu and again in the plugins menu on the actual um, Windows version. On Mac, everything happens through the one update button. So if there's an update to an add-on or plug-in or the core of Scrapebox, anything in Scrapebox, you update everything through here so you don't have separate add-on updates and plug-in updates and that sort of thing. You just update and when you're done you close it down, start it back up, and away you go. Now at the time of recording this video, it's actually December of 2017. Um, the Mac version actually just came out earlier this year in December. Um, it's been in the works for quite some time. Uh, sorry, it didn't come out early in December. It came out earlier in 2017. Uh, but it's been in the works for some time. It's not done. It's like 97% done. So for example, they don't have all the plugins in here, only the um, expired finder at the moment and then the yellow pages scraper and then the email scraper premium plugin which just came out a few days ago are in here but you'll notice like the article scraper is not yet completed um, and the automator is not yet completed that sort of thing those are coming and uh, they'll be here but they're just not yet done also a few minor settings are different uh, such as under settings connections and other settings you'll notice the other tab isn't here yet um, and there's a few less settings on the more harvester settings tab so they are going to add some more of those settings but they just didn't jump in and add some of the lesser used settings right away uh, just so that they could get it done and get it out there and you know get feedback on it and flush out any bugs and that sort of thing and uh, there's a few thousand Mac users at the moment uh, and there are, of course tens of thousands of Windows users but so everything's running up and stable uh, it's running all the way through the latest version of High Sierra everything runs fine and then there's some other things about the way it Mac works as well, such as with the harvesting and with licensing. So let's talk about harvesting, but don't quit the video before we get to licensing because it's super important um, to understand the actual licensing part of things because the licensing is completely different on uh, Scrapebox for Mac versus Scrapebox for Windows. So on the actual um, harvester settings, there is no detailed harvester and custom harvester. They're just kind of built into one. On the Mac version, on the Windows version, they're split. On the Mac version, they're together, built into one. The delay that you will find in the detailed harvester and that I talk about in the safely scraping Google uh, video and, and that sort of thing, and anytime there's a, a delay, and we're talking for just like regular keyword scraping from the search engines, the delay itself can be found under settings, harvester engine configuration, and then we click on the particular engine and there's a delay here. So let's say I want to delay for Google, I could put my delay in here if I want like nine seconds or like, you know, 
30 seconds or whatever, I hit that and then I hit update. So, or I can add it as a new engine. So I can do update and that'll change the primary Google engine. So if I update um, and close out of this and go back into here and start harvesting, this primary Google engine now has a 30 second delay. However, if I wanted to have both, I could. So let's say I want Google with a 30 second delay and Google without. So I could do Google, you know, 30 delay and I can add this as a new engine, right? And so then it'll be in the list here. It actually adds it to the bottom, but there it is. And I have my 30 second delay and then I can change my primary Google engine back to a delay of zero if I want and update that and away we go. And then when I go to start harvesting, I have my Google engine. And then down here, I have my Google 30 delay engine, that sort of thing. Now, a word of caution, if you do not know what all of the rest of the things in here are, all these settings, don't mess with them because then it won't work. Just change the delay. If you know what all this is and you're gonna modify that, that's fine, but that's a whole different video. Uh, but just, there's the delay. Licensing in Mac is separate from licensing in Windows. So, if you have a Windows license and you've had a Windows license for the past eight years since Greatbox came out or you bought it a year ago or yesterday, it doesn't matter. Windows license cannot be used on Mac. So that old license you have, you can, it's a lifetime license. You can use it on Windows forever. That's fine, but you cannot activate it on a Mac. If you try, you'll get an email saying it doesn't work and then it just obviously won't work. If you buy a Mac license, it will not work on Windows. So if you buy a Mac license, you can't use it on a Windows VPS or on an actual Windows you know, machine, that sort of thing. A Mac license is a Mac license, a Windows license is a Windows license. However, there is a couple of crossovers. So one, if you buy um, a Mac license or a Windows license, and you buy some plugins, like the premium plugins up here, it works across the board for all of them, and you only have to buy the plugins once, so long as you buy them with the same email. So breaking that down, if I have, you know, me at google.com, or me at gmail.com, let's say, which obviously is super basic, so call it loopline at gmail.com, which doesn't exist, but if it did, and I registered all my Scrapebox licenses under it, I could buy a Windows license under loopline at gmail.com and a Mac license under loopline at gmail.com and then I could go in and buy the expired domain finder plugin at loopline at gmail.com and then it would get activated for both Windows and Mac license and I only have to buy the plugin once. If I have three Mac licenses and seven Windows licenses, I buy the plugin once, it works across the board. But it has to be bought with the same email because otherwise it obviously doesn't work. So, and that email is when you buy with a credit card, it's whatever email you type in. If you use a credit card, debit card, that sort of thing. If you buy with your actual PayPal account and use PayPal funds, it is whatever is listed on your PayPal account as the primary PayPal email. That's what the money gets sent from. And if you're using the same PayPal account, you haven't changed anything. I mean, my primary email has been the same for like, literally, I think since like 1999 when I opened my PayPal account or not terribly long after that. So most people never change it, so it'll be fine. But if you have changed your primary email, then you know, you're know you going to want to change it back to buy this to keep everything on the same page. Otherwise, if you buy a set of plugins and a Mac license with one email address and then you go over here and use a different PayPal account or you change everything around in PayPal and get rid of the old email accounts and then buy it a Windows license and some plugins, you're going to have to buy the plugins separate. So that's how licensing works in Mac. And they tell you this like on the Mac download page. It says, here, I'll just show you. So I popped open the download page. When you first buy a license, the way that you can tell what you're buying is, the payment is the same. When you go to scrapebox.com and pay, just pay and you're good to go. And then you'll be kicked over to the download page and it gets to choose Windows or 32 or 64 bit and then Apple Mac. If I go to one of the Windows links and download that and activate the Windows version, my license becomes a Windows version. If I go to the Mac version and then click on that and download and activate the Mac version, then my license becomes a Mac version. And right here it says important, please read, blah, 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 blah. It tells you the exact same thing. Mac's licenses are for Mac and Windows are for Windows. And so pretty basic that they work separately. Something else that's important to note is at the time of this video, which is mid-December of 2017, um, there, the Mac version of Scrapebox is 32-bit only. On that download page, let me see if I can go back there, you saw that there was a Windows option for downloading a 32-bit or a 64-bit. That's because back when Scrapebox started, there was 32-bit only. Scrapebox is written in Delphi, and Delphi only supported 32-bit for Windows. 
32-bit has some limitations, like it can only use up to 1.8 gigabytes of actual memory. And if you work with large lists and that sort of thing, you'll exceed that and then it crashes. So Scrapebox completely rebuilt the Windows version uh, a couple of three years ago or so. Over 1.1 million lines of code. When Delphi came out with the ability to support 64-bit, uh, Scrapebox rebuilt the entire thing. That's how we got version 2 in Windows. And it's 64-bit or 32-bit, either one works. At the moment, Delphi only fairly recently started supporting the Macintosh platform. So there is, and it's 32-bit only. So that's why there's only one link here, Apple Mac, it's 32-bit. So you wanna be aware of that. Delphi is supposed to support 64-bit down the track and Scrapebox has said that they intend to write a 64-bit version of Scrapebox for Mac when that comes out. Sufficient to say the Delphi compiler uh, which is owned by the same company that makes Delphi for Windows, that is all only 32-bit at the moment. So if you decide to get the Mac version, you want to be aware that if you go loading in millions and millions of URLs or keywords or that sort of thing, you'll probably run out of memory and then it's going to crash. So you can't. You have to be in mind that if you're used to using 32-bit programs, it's fine. I'm not trying to say that Mac is 32-bit. I realize that Mac is 64-bit, or they have 64-bit versions of their OS anyways. Just bear in mind that right at the moment, as of December 2017, and you're welcome to check with Scrapebox, but even right here you can see it says 32-bit built right in. You can check Scrapebox before you purchase and email support and ask them if they have the 64-bit version yet and they'll be happy to tell you, I'm sure, but otherwise, as of right now, assume that it's gonna be the 32-bit, so just you wanna keep your list size smaller. Um, another limitation of how Mac builds their OS and how this all works with the Mac OS versus the Windows OS, if you were a previous Windows user, then you know that you can run an unlimited number of instances of Scrapebox on Windows on the same machine, so I can fire up like 12 different copies down here uh, if I want, and just run them all, just cascade all the windows, and I can do different things at one time and that sort of thing. Mac doesn't work that way. You get one instance. So Scrapebox is right here. When it's running, it's doing what it's doing. You can't do anything else. If you have a Windows license, of course, you can still, there are a lot of people that still have Windows licenses that have used them on the Mac over the years, and they just installed something like a virtual machine like VirtualBox, or they use Parallels, or if they wanted to switch back and forth, they use Bootcamp. Um, Parallels and VirtualBox will run at the same time as your Mac OS, of course, or they would get just a Windows VPS and put the Windows version on that. So if you're totally like December 2017 and you're a Mac user and you love Mac and you want to use the Mac version of Scrapebox, but you already know that you need to work with tens of millions of URLs at once, or you were a prior Windows user or have a Windows license and you just want to jump on this and you're used to working with 20 different copies of Scrapebox and you know tens of millions of URLs at once, you're going to have to work differently on the Mac. So it's totally fine. It's not bad. It just is what it is. So I just want you to be aware of it because I've already had people that have sent me an email saying, you know, why is this crashing? And it's because it ran out of memory because it's 32 bit or it's just different. So Mac is just different. You know, Mac has some advantages and simplicity that Windows doesn't have. And then Windows has some advantages that Mac doesn't have, but they're, they're different computers, different operating systems rather. And uh, each has their, their own advantage. And so some people want one, some people want the other. So Scrapebox works on either one. And you can use it for both, buy plugins for either one, and it works across both. I know several people that already have both Windows and Mac licenses, um, which seems pretty common. Obviously, I have a Windows and Mac licenses, uh, several of each, uh, and away we go. So that is kind of like an overview, the bird's eye view of Mac and Windows. Uh, and so how Scrapebox kind of works on both and how Scrapebox is a little different on the Mac. Um, and again, I said it's 97% complete, you know, thereabouts. So they have more to do, including adding the plugins in uh, and then adding some more settings that, that aren't in there yet and that sort of thing. So it's only going to keep going from here. Obviously, the versions are different. So this is like dot .45. I think the Windows version is on like .94 at the moment. So it's probably a good idea if you email support to tell them, hey, you know, I have a Mac license or I have a Windows license or give them the version number so they can see it. Because if you email in and just ask them a question, they may have no idea if you're talking about the Mac version or the Windows version uh, and that sort of thing because uh, they are a tiny bit different and obviously troubleshooting those 
are going to be different in the file structures and how they work and that sort of thing. So that is Scrapebox for Mac. Thanks for watching this Scrapebox video. For more Scrapebox videos, click the subscribe button down below and then click the bell. And then check out these other great Scrapebox videos.